Central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, are digital versions of a central bank-issued FI currency and can come in different models. The Chinese mainland, Hong Kong, and Thailand are joining forces on an initiative for cross-border payments, and they could one day build a real-time 24-hour payment bridge between Asia and the Middle East. This project significantly expands on Hong Kong and Thailand's earlier efforts. The central banks of China and the United Arab Emirates will also join the second phase of their CBDC project. And while China's digital currency electronic payment for its digital renminbi has not been launched yet, it's currently being tested for trial and retail use by the general public. And let's get more discussions on that as we cross over to our guest, Mr. Liu Jing, Associate Dean and Professor of Accounting and Finance at Chiang Kong Graduate School of Business. Professor Liu, thank you for joining us. Now, let's talk about this. Do you think CBDC has greater security and also liquidity? Um, I, I think both, both paper money and uh, digital currency are liquid. However, because uh, we're in a digital age, uh, money often is moving digitally, uh, so therefore digital currency has an advantage. Uh, regarding uh, uh, security, um, any currency has some risks. Uh, when you use paper money, for example, uh, it could be fake or stolen. Uh, when you have digital currency, you are, your cell phone could be hacked. However, for the average individual, I think digital currency will be far safer than paper money uh, because you can engaging in very sophisticated security measures to protect your money. And since the Chinese digital currency is centralized, uh, it is uh, fully traceable, uh, meaning that even if your money is stolen by someone, you can probably trace that person who stole your money. Uh, so therefore, it is not easy for illicit money to conceal. And uh, so, so therefore, I think in both uh, liquidity and uh, security, digital money would have an advantage. Mm -hmm. And also now we know that China is joining the uh, multiple CBDC bridge project. Do you think it's going to play a big role in boosting Chinese RMB internationalization? Uh, I think it helps, uh, but the internationalization of the RMB uh, depends on supply and demand. Uh, in the market for uh, currencies, uh, if there's a strong demand globally for RMB, it is more likely to be internationalized. Uh, the demand depends on whether the currency can be used to buy goods and services, uh, and it also depends on whether the money can be used to buy financial investments like in stocks and bonds. Uh, the fact that the dollar is a global currency is not surprising, right? Uh, because the U.S. has the largest economy, open capital account, uh, deep financial markets, and the strongest military to protect its real and the financial assets. Uh, now that the Chinese economy is the second largest in the world, uh, there's a latent demand uh, for the RMB to be used globally. Uh, but to really make that happen, China will need to convert the latent demand into explicit demand. Uh, so Chinese consumers using digital currency globally uh, would be a good first, start, uh, first step. Um, uh, but because the digital yuan is not decentralized, uh, like the Bitcoin, for example, uh, which is born to as a global currency uh, due to its uh, global effort. Uh, it will be hard work uh, to actually make the digital RMB accepted by people in other countries. Uh, so there's a long way to go. Yeah. So as CBDC rolls out, how will financial services change? Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to forecast now, but uh, I think there uh, at least three things might happen. Uh, one is that uh, uh, when the digital currency is actually rolled out, I expect it will be, it will play a significant role in cross-border payments. Uh, that's number one. Number two, domestically, I think Alipay and WeChat will not dominate the payment market anymore because now you have a formidable competition in a dig digital RMB. Uh, thirdly, um, uh, I, I think as a result of the second point, uh, it will slow down the outflow of deposits from uh, conventional banks to to these internet platforms. Uh, so other things could happen, but the, these three things I think are uh, the most forecastable. Now, let's talk about the US dollar for a while. You touched upon that just uh, a while ago. Now, Jan Yellen has uh, hinted that uh, digital dollar is a priority for the United States. Do you think the US dollar would become a dominant digital currency? 
Uh, if the U.S. were to digitize the, the dollar, I think the, it will be a very strong contender globally, uh, uh, simply for the reason that the U.S. dollar is already the, the strongest uh, currency globally, right? It is the global reserve currency, and roughly 70, 80 percent of the global transactions are, are, are made using, using dollars. Uh, but on the other hand, there's a drawback in the sense that because the current system under paper money, right, the U.S. dollar is already working so well globally. So there will be sort of less demand for uh, the digital form uh, of the dollar. Uh, but uh, you know, sort of if you combine all the factors, I think the U.S. dollar, if digitalized, uh, would be a very, very strong contender globally. Yeah. Great stuff. Thank you very much. That's Professor Liu Jing from the Changkun Graduate School of Business. Thank you for your insight.